Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Colin Maison Pierre of CM Knife Designs and Devo Knives. Under the CM Knife Designs banner, Colin has licensed his work to the likes of Kubi Knives and Tucson Knives. And recently, Colin joined forces with Kevin Johnson, you know him as Kev of Lefty EDC, to form Devo Knives. Now, I got the chance to check out their debut knife, the Stout, a super steel sheep's cliff blade and an awesome titanium bolster lock handle that, that cut as well as it looked. Well, the, the blade cut as well as it looked. Beautiful, beautiful knife. And the future looks bright for Devo. I can say that without reservation because right here in my hot little hands, I have one of their upcoming uh, knives. This uh, release is a prototype right here, uh, but it will be coming out. Uh, well, we'll find out all about that, but it's the growler and it's sweet. So uh, I'm really looking forward to watching this company grow. We'll meet Colin. We'll talk all about his work. But first, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell and download the show. Uh, to your favorite podcast app so you can listen to the show while you're on the go. And as always, join us on Patreon if you want to help support the show. And if you want exclusive content, interview extras, knife giveaways, and more, quickest way to do that is to either zap the QR code or head to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit thenifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Colin, welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, sir. Hey, Bob. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. It's good to have you. Uh, I just want to say congratulations on Devo Knives and the forming of that very exciting company and uh, the exciting work you're putting out. Like I said, I had the stout. I have this in my hands, and I checked out a couple of others at your booth at Blade Show. So congratulations on your success. Thank you so much. We, we really appreciate it. Ah, oh, it's it's my pleasure, believe me. Uh, uh, but before we get to to um, to Devo, I want to talk about CM Knife Designs, and sure. um, you know, I discovered a, a a little trove of knives that you've worked on um, and had produced, and they're impressive. And uh, I know that they're well liked, especially one in particular. But uh, tell me how you got started in this, and uh, and how how knives. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been a collector of knives for as long as I can remember. Um, since I was a kid, I probably have knives around here that are 30 something years old. Um, and you know, of course throughout my childhood and, and whatever, I would sketch knives here and there and, you know, play around with designs. And it wasn't until, um, a couple of years ago that I, thought I would try my hand at really um, designing one and seeing what it took to get one in production. And um, so I did, I, I designed what, what was this one right here, which I um, has been in the works for now a couple of years, um, which we'll talk about more later, but uh, I designed it, shopped it around a little bit. I, I emailed some some folks that I admired in the community, um, <clears throat> got their feedback on it, and uh, shopped it around. And it was really sort of sort of that simple. And I got shot down a few times, and um, you know, Best Tech ended up picking it up, and they they have been they've been wonderful. And ever since then, it's been that's all the, the confidence boost I needed. And I've been, uh, you know, designing ever since. Best tech knives. See, I, I didn't even mention that in my intro and it's funny because they're one of my absolute favorites. I love best tech. Um, yeah. they, they can produce such a wide range of things. Um, I, I noticed that that's a lock back and that's interesting and different these days. Yeah, that was sort of the idea. Um, you know, I'm sure we're all aware it's a flooded field of frame locks and liner locks and, and whatever. And 
and I love backlogs. I, I um, have for a long time and, you know, it, there seems to only be a couple of places where you can get them. Either it's a spider co or a, um, you know, a cold steel, which is essentially a lock back. And, uh, you know, I wanted to try something a little different and, um, it worked and, and best tech did a really good job with it. Um, I'm really, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And the first, I mean, I held it for the first time when I, when I met you at blade show uh, a few weeks ago and, wow, um, that was, I mean, that was two years after I submitted the design to them. Let's see it. I mean, we're talking about it. Sure. Let's. Um, so here it is. Oh man. Uh, there's going to be at least this version and a, and a micarta version. Um, sorry, my lighting is kind of bad. No, no, no. It looked, it looked good up close like that. This has a, a blue pivot collar. The, I, I think the micarta one did not have a blue pivot collar and the micarta one had more of a kind of be blasted blade. But anyways, it's a, it's a lockback. It's on bearings. Um, the, the sort of party trick of this knife and, and this was just an I, you know, I was very, I, I still am, I still consider myself very new to this, but um, when I designed it, you know, the idea was like, I really wanted a smooth lock back and, um, you know, without this long break in period that you typically have to have. Um, so I designed it with this little uh, ceramic, obviously you can't see it, but there's a little ceramic ball bearing on the inside of this lock face here that um interfaces with the blade tang when you when you open and close it and you may be able to see there's sort of a little track being yes um, yeah you can see that being worn, worn in there um <clears throat> and i sent this file to best tech and this design to best tech you know with the caveat that i'm not an engineer this is just the thought you know maybe <laughs> maybe less sort of surface contact on a lockback would, would create a smoother knife. And, um, and they, they ran with it and they did it. And uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I mean, it flicks open wow. really nicely. It's really sort of drops. It's on bearings, of course. Um, so it's really kind of the action on it's great. Um, and it's a, and it's, I'm going to interrupt you here because sure. I'm excited. <laughs> it's a cool knife. Yeah. Uh, it's a mid back lock, which, which makes it one hand friendly. Yeah. And I love the idea that you reduce the surface area, um, you know, touching the, the rounded part of the tang yeah. while it opens and, and, and then you put bearings and, and that's a very unique thing to hear of bearings on a, uh, on a lock back. Yeah. You don't see it that often. There are a few, I think the, spider co um what's it called spy opera their line oh, steel right. collab ha has <laughs> that and i think some of the italian lockbacks have bearings but um you don't get the you know you get this really sort of positive like um thing with the thumb studs that you don't get with this with the spidey holes i mean you can flick those you know middle finger flick those but you can middle 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 finger flick these as well it just feels like nothing I've never, nothing I've ever owned. To be honest, um, it's a really unique feeling knife. Um, it almost, you know, the the ball bearing almost functions as a detent in a way. You know, you kind of open it to this to this point and you hit this shelf, and um, if you know, you can just kind of pop it open past that shelf, and it really. Uh, oh, 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 I see what you mean. It gets around that corner and getting right. around that corner really shoots right. it out there. So this is, you better be, I don't want to plant any, any ideas in anyone's brains, but you better be careful about this. You better, I mean, yeah. it sounds, it sounds like a, uh, maybe not, a, I don't know, disruptive in the, in the lockback world anyway, you know, we'll, and see. we'll see. I, I talked to, I was chatting with um, Justin Lundquist, who is one of, one of the, designers that I've admired for a long time. And he's one of the guys that I emailed this um, to early on. Um, and I, you know, got his feedback on it and he was very, very positive and, um, you know, encouraging and everything. And I ran into him at blade show and that was th this past blade show. And that was the first time I'd ever met him face to face. And I kind of chased him down 
and uh, showed him the knife that he had given me some feedback on. And um, he mentioned that, that it sh it's, it's something that may be worth like, you know, it's, it's, I'm not going to go through the, you know, pain of like patenting it or anything. I don't think it's, I don't think it's worth that, but maybe naming it something or calling it, you know, <laughs> a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, giving it some sort of, um, you know, identifiable um, name. And I, I'm not going to like, I'm not looking to charge people to use this or anything like that, but just so I, you know, it's a, it, it is a new thing that I haven't seen before. And um, it worked out surprisingly well. It was really sort of a, a, a guess, you know, it, it, in a way it's, it, it's giving the lock back the Omnumzon treatment or the, mm. it, or the, you know what I'm saying with the, because that knife also a lot of the smoothness in that knife relies on that uh, corner mounted ceramic ball. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's um, I mean, that was kind of the idea. I've, I've never handled a Unumzan, but I've handled a Nkosi, which I think is yes. the same, same sort of thing where, you know, the, the ball is kind of on the corner of the lock face and serves as the detent ball slash, um, you know, what it rides on and yeah uh yeah so that was the idea and uh, i think it's i mean so far it seems to have worked out well you know i think it's one of those kind of things that you know i'm i have had this for a few weeks and i've been traveling for most of that time so i haven't really had to had a chance to hmm. sit down and fidget with it and break it in and see how it um you know how this actually works but it feels it feels really nice and it's a really unique it's a unique feeling knife so is this scheduled for release uh, or is this still in the development phase um as far as i know this is scheduled for release i think um you, i mean best tech told me <laughs> originally that it was going to be this month and we're it's the 29th now so i don't know if that's gonna happen but right. um you know, I'm, I'm waiting on their response to see, um, when exactly it's going to be released. But as far from what I understand, this is, this is the production, you know, ready knife. Uh, they just got two of them ready for blade show. Um, I think the other one, the micarta one is going to start circulating around, um, among some reviewers, uh, pretty soon, but I'm pretty sure this is, this is how it's going to be. And, um, it should be, you know, the next few weeks. Ah, it's exciting. It's in and the so, offing. It's in, you don't yeah. know the exact date, but right, right. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Okay. So, so your first knife design is now starting to come to fruition, but in the meantime, there's been a bunch of others. There have um, been. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have, like I said, you know, after the sort of, um, you know, edification i needed from from best tech that that this could actually happen uh i just started you know cranking designs out and seeing and seeing who would who would pick them up and and how this whole thing worked so the um tucson actually has been uh pretty great this was the this was actually the first knife that i had hit the market um and this is the 319 i believe um, I was just watching Jared Neve rave about that knife mm. uh, in in his uh, you know best I think best utility knife. Yeah, that's that's right. I I caught that video too. That was that was very nice. Yeah, I think that was, and this was the knife that um, this is sort of one of the reasons why Kevin and I were introduced. I think he he this was the first knife of mine that came across his desk, and I think he ended up selling his to to Jared. Um, but yeah, I mean, this has been a, a pretty popular knife. You know, it's 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 really cool. It's right up my alley in terms. Obviously, I designed it, but like this is my sort of size and you know, ergo um, dream knife in a way. It's really it's really thick, um, and this is something that I wasn't you know fully aware. You know, when you work on these collaborations with these companies. Um, there's not a lot of communication we'll say like between when you send them the design and when it hits the shelves, you know, you, you, you send them the design and, um, whatever, six months later, 
it, you you see you see it on eBay or something. Oh and, my gosh, uh, really? Yeah, that well, with, that's been my experience. You know, I, I I don't know that I can't speak for everyone else, but um, you know, there's not a lot of like back and forth approvals on this and that. They're just like, okay, we're taking it, we're running running with it, and um, you'll see it when it's done, kind of thing. <laughs> And it's not released to, I mean, especially as a newer designer, it probably, it maybe it felt like it should come out to some fanfare, you know, like, why are we not, but why is the world, why does the world not know? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Exactly. In fact, um, while we're on the subject of Tucson, this was my second Tucson design. And yes. I wasn't even aware that this one um, was released when it was this, I, someone told me, I forget who it was, but someone sent me a message on Instagram or something saying that they had seen my second knife with them come out. Um, this, this is the three or one, seven, four, sorry. Um, another cool little knife. They, you know, this was one where they, uh, Tucson took some, some liberties in um, throughout the engineering and design process, I think. You know, it looks like the one that I sent them, but they changed a couple of things that let's say I was surprised when I saw it on on eBay. But I, I, I got to say, I'm I'm a little stunned about the uh, just about the um, I don't know, the fact that it just a appears, you know, like I yeah. it's interesting to me because yeah. because these things mean so much. And, and, and also it's a I mean, to us, to knife people, they mean so much. Sure. And then when it's your creation that you that you labored over, you know, in your, like, this is a labor of your brain and of your creativity and all that. And then, and then to send it and then have it. And th th you know, it's a great thing that they make great knives, yeah. you know, cause it yeah. would for all that to happen. And then it's a lousy knife, but yeah. But wow. They, they, they're just like, here, thanks. Thanks guy. Essentially. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and you know, I've only worked with, um, a few of these OEMs. So obviously I'm sure they all work a little differently. You know, mm -hmm. Tucson is, um, I love their knives. They do great work and, um, you know, there's just not a lot of communication between, you know, when you send them the design and when it, when it hits the shelves. Um, and that's okay. You know, like, uh, yeah. I understand it. it's a Tucson knife and they're giving me design credit for it and they pay me for it. It's great. I'm not complaining about anything. It's just how they right. work. Um, Kubi has been different, you know, they're, they're way more sort of communicative. It's not, there's still not a lot of back and forth um, throughout the manufacturing process or anything like that, but um, they're, they're much more likely to be like, Hey, your knife's done. Here's, here it is. We'll, we'll send you um, a couple of them and it'll be ready. You know, it'll hit the shelves in a couple of weeks, you know? Well, that's that's cool. You can't ask for much more than that. You can't yeah. ask them to send you progress pictures. Look, yeah. look, we did the pivot today. Like, yeah. oh, thanks. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, 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 I got to say, it's not surprising to me to hear that uh, was your experience with Tucson. And the only reason I say that is they're a bit of a mystery to me, just in general. Um, their knives like appear and they're all they're all numbered, but they're they seem I thought it was just like a you know, if it's in the three hundreds, it's the most recent, mm -hmm. but I don't, is that how it works? I don't think so. Because I don't think this so either. Cause yours was, is a 174 or something. Yeah, This one was more recent and it was 174. They're um, just a mysterious company. So, I, you know, it's like, who are they? Are. <laughs> it's a great question. I don't really know. I mean, I have communicated with a guy um, via Instagram DMS and, a mysterious email, which is basically just like a bunch of numbers and the uh, at gmail.com. You know, it's like there's, there is, and I don't know if it, maybe it's intentional on their part that there's this sort of cloak of mystery behind them because the knives honestly are really good. And I think yeah. everyone um, realizes that to some degree. I mean, there's, of course, they're a production company. There's going to be some lemons, but like everyone I've gotten from them has been dialed in. Um, to my satisfaction, at least. And the whole eBay thing, I think, throws people off a little bit, you know. And now I think they're moving to a different, you can buy them on Amazon. And I think mm -hmm. White Mountain, this one actually, plug, you can buy on White Mountain Knives right now, I believe. Oh, sweet. Um, so 
I think they're trying to get out of this like weird um, eBay bidding process to even buy buy one. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, huh. they're, yeah, they are a mysterious company for sure. Well, so now the stout. I had the stout on loan, and um, what a beautiful knife! I called it a sheep's cliff up front. It kind of has some sheep's yep. sheep's foot to it, but it also has a little bit of worn cliff. The tip is a usable. Uh, you know, you could make that an aggressive tip. It's yep. got a beautiful thumb swale that's angular, which I like, but it's still very comfortable. The ergonomics are great. I love a bolster lock. It's that's probably um, right now kind of my current favorite. I love a bolster lock because you get you get the perceived stoutness of a frame lock with the with the ease of use of a of a liner lock. Sure. Tell me yeah. how this came about. Tell me how you met Kev and decided that you were going to join Creative Forces. Not an easy thing to do. Yeah. No. Um, so a couple of my knives came across. Um, Kev's desk, this one in particular, and this one. And I think those spoke to him enough that we struck up a conversation on Instagram. Um, you know, I think it was me saying like, Hey, thanks for the kind words sort of thing. And, um, and I off, uh, and I sent him my, um, personal, uh, Kubi for him to review and, and he loved it. And, and he had some sketch of a knife, uh, you know, in his back pocket or whatever that he's been, you know, sitting on for a while. And uh, he was like, hey, I got this sketch. Like, you know, let me know what you think about it or if you can do anything with it or whatever. And he sent it to me. And, of course, it was like a rough sketch, but I saw some potential there. And uh, and just said, yeah, sure. Like, I'll, um, you know, run it through my, my process of – of designing a knife and see where it ends up and i sent him a a, a mock-up of of what what eventually turned out to be the stout and um and you know as he always sort of puts it he's like well it's sort of both of ours now you know obviously it's uh you know to go from the sketch to like turning it into a, a knife that could actually you know be produced as a as a process so um that's how ultimately devo was born i mean we 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 kind of said well we have to figure out how to how to sell this and i you know i know from doing these kind of things that like these collaborations they're not exactly like very fruitful um <laughs> endeavors you know like mm -hmm. you, you, you get paid but it's not a lot and it's more like, you know, it's more for the, at least, again, this is speaking for me, who is a very, very new at this. I'm sure there are um, more well-known designers out there that have, that make great money off their collaborations. But um, it didn't make sense to like shop this around to a, to a company um, for Kevin and I to like split the profit off of whatever we would make. So, right, right. so that's when and you know he has the platform to 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 sort of market it and um and i have the design chops and that's sort of how um how diva was born that's great so i mean that those sound like very complementary um skills very complementary uh um uh what do you call it? attributes that you're bringing yeah. to the table um yeah. how, how does the how does the work how does the designing, how does the creative part of the process work with two people designing one knife? Yeah. Um, good question. I mean, like for the, for the stout, it was sort of, you know, I think people have seen this original sketch. He put it on his Instagram at some point and it was, I, I literally traced the sketch and, um, you know, reworked it to the point where i I felt like it would function as an, as a, you know, folding knife, um, you know, where we could send it off and get manufactured. And, um, that's kind of how things work in general. Like, you know, he'll have an idea. Um, and, and I should say like the stout is, you know, it, it's not like a knife that I would have designed on my own. And I don't mean that as, at all as a, as an <laughs> insult. I love the way the stout turned out. So it's been this like sort of fun, um, challenge of like you know reaching into his um 
mind is in terms of like what he's looking for in a knife and um you know putting my own twist on it and that's sort of how every knife that we've designed has has been and it, and we have you know a few more in the works i think you you have one of the prototypes and um you know oftentimes they're they're kind of born from a from a sketch or an idea that he has and um I take it and run with it and of course put my own my own sort of um design twist on it and um we go back and forth and end up where we end up then would you say that you have um <clears throat> Well, no, I'm not going to ask that question. I'm going to tell you, it seems like you have very compatible tastes in knives just from knowing what you've made and what you what you collect and what uh, what Kev seems to really like on his channel. Um, yeah. Do, do you is there is there an ideal you're going for in the designs like um, because uh, the reason I ask is the stout and this both seem very work oriented, um, mm -hmm. but this one has a different i i really i i very much like this one um for the point i love the blade shape i love the broad uh grind of this i was about to tell you before we started rolling and i decided i wanted to save it to tell you here but this is one of the few knives that is on loan to me that i've used actually mm -hmm. kev uh loaned me this amazing evo and oh, i'm yeah. just like like it's, it's not a little velvet pillow over here. And yeah. but this one, this one I used and I cut up, uh, we, we had a, an Ikea affair recently and I cut up some of the Ikea cardboard with this. Um, I, I was, I was careful because it is thin and it's not mine and, uh, but it's steel and I know it can take yeah. it and it glided through everything. And the blade itself has this beautiful luster to it, uh, yeah. that, that didn't didn't get like I, at first I was a little worried it was going to get all it would get scarred up, but yeah. it didn't uh, like at all. And um, so tell me about these prototypes and this design and what the goal, the design goal was with this. And then in a broader sense, how that fits in with all your knives. That's a lot of questions. Let's just talk yeah. about that. Well, I'll start with the the design of this one. It um this sort of came from a conversation that Kevin and I were having about, um, you know, he, he wanted a, a kind of big belly, um, knife, you know, to be the follow up, I think to our, to the style, which is not, you know, it's sort of, it's not a traditional Warren cliff, I guess, but straighter edge, you know, Warren cliffy sheep's footy type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think he referenced in, in, in regards to the growler design he referenced the bench made i think it's the hidden canyon it's one of their fixed mm -hmm. blades mm -hmm. and it has a big it's a big belly kind of um you know tall blade big belly kind of thing and that was essentially the inspiration for um for the growler that's the the, the start of the growler and we also wanted to follow up the stout with kind of an affordable thing that we wouldn't have to do another pre-order for, you know, we're, we're hoping that this will hit around a hundred dollars, maybe, maybe a tad more kind of depending on everything. But, um, we wanted, a an affordable knife with the, with the vastly different blade profile than the one that we just came out with. And, um, we landed on the growler and we're, we're super happy with it. You know, it is, um very close to being um put in production i think um shielden is actually the oem that we ended up that's that's the one you have at the right. shield um, prototype and we've been in communication with them with some um some tweaks that we're going to make uh to it the other one that i handled at blade was kubi was that who Yes. You did the other one? Okay. Yes. That one was noticeably thicker, as I recall. Yes. It was. And um that's one of those things where you you know you you give some real specific um specs and you know they they weren't hit for whatever reason. And you know, maybe they were able they could have sort of thinned things out, but we we felt that shielden really nailed it and they and they gave us like six prototypes i think we had a lot wow. and they were all really um consistent in their 
the detents and the action centering, all that kind of stuff was really dialed in on all of them. So it was, it gave us enough confidence in, in shielding to move forward with them. And, um, and we like the thinness of it, you know, and we're going to, one of the changes we're making is we're going to do some chamfering. Um, it feels a little sort of sharp uh, on the corners now. Um, so we're going to soften the edges a little bit. You mean of the handle? Of the handle, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just just for the record, for people who are listening or watching, not sharp in any way that this is, there's no discomfort, but I see what you mean. It's it's luxurious to have a little bit of a chamber. Sure, exactly. Right. But you could use this all day as is, uh, this prototype anyway, I feel, and it would still be fine. And that's because of the broadness of the handle, the, yeah. the profile, you know, the overall silhouette of the handle, and then the thinness all together. I mean... Yeah, this is very comfortable, um, but I love that it has a nice point too. I, mm -hmm. I know, I know, I don't know. I, I just like a centerline point, even even on a worn clip, and and mm -hmm. that can that can be done. And um, that was one thing that I really liked about the stout was that it had a very nice usable tip, but it wasn't an aggressive, scary tip that if you pull that thing out to cut your sandwich at work, people are going to comment. Right. But if you needed to shiv one of them, you could. I, Heaven forbid, and I'm I'm only making a joke. But the point is, I like a usable tip like that. Yeah, but but it doesn't have to be scary looking. Yeah, agreed. And a, a lot of I think a lot of the stuff Kevin and I both do with our knives is um, more sort of geared towards a, a Warren Cliff sheep's foot style blade, you know. Um, and if we're being honest, it's like boxes and you know whatever it's the stuff that most of us use our knives for to be let's be honest you know and and this one the 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 growler does feel a little bit more like a you know food prep kind of thing you know with the big belly and the and the um you know if you hold it the belly sort of is dips below mm -hmm. your, your finger line you know it's like a it's a it would be a good food chopper um yep. but also the tip isn't like you know we we intentionally sort of dove the tip down towards the center line a little bit to keep it from being a really high um, mm -hmm. belly on it because we don't need that necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, what are you calling that blade shape? I'm, I'm going to call it a clip point. What are you going to call it? Oh, good question. <laughs> we, we haven't discussed that yet. It is sort of clip point esque, huh? I've, I haven't honestly considered what, um, what to call it and it's getting so it's getting harder and harder to, to categorize blades i'm working on it we're working on a, a new design right now actually which is a which is a lockback to sort of hopefully ride the wave of the hype of this one um and you know it's it's sort of a tanto um but i have all these different variations of blade shapes that are kind of a clip point tent you know there's like once you're in there just messing around, you're like, man, I don't, this is so far beyond any kind of classification of a, of a typical blade shape that, you know, who knows it's, it's a combination of some stuff for sure. Yeah. It's like uh, blade shapes lately have gone the way of martial arts. Now, if you're a martial artist and you can't grapple, it's like, you know, half the game or, or whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. you know how everything has kind of gotten mixed up. Yeah. Um, everywhere i mean that's that's the society we live in you know everything is blending together or whatever yeah. um but it's it's kind of interesting to see how blades people call people call uh bellied worn cliffs reverse tantos and to me yeah. it it makes me bristle i'm like how can you say that <laughs> yeah yeah it's interesting and it, and i think there is some you know in designing a knife like you want to somehow differentiate it from from other stuff that you've seen i mean mm -hmm. you know and of course you know i've we've seen it already with knives we've come out with people are always like well this looks like a blah 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 you know it's like you can't get away from you know your knife falling into some category that looks roughly like something else um but part of the challenge of designing is to like you know make something that looks fairly unique and that doesn't at least remind yourself of of something else that you like and it's hard to it's hard to not do that um but i think that that maybe has like pushed this whole blade shape conversation to a different place where it's really hard now to classify 
um, you know, certain blade shapes. And, and I think that's cool. I mean, I think, you know, we don't need to necessarily have things fall into a category of, oh, this is a, a, a whatever, um, you know, is it a usable, cool looking blade? Great. Well, you know, call it whatever you want, I guess. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, when you're designing, like you were just saying, like you, you have to, you want to make sure that you're making something that doesn't re at least remind you of something else. Yeah. But that's, that's gotta be difficult because, you know, we're all kind of, we're, we're all unaware. Oh, I shouldn't say all we tend to be unaware of where all of our influences come things that we've sure. seen that may, like I stare at the, I stare at the brake lights of cars and they're all shaped like knife blades, I swear yes. of yes. different sorts. And, uh, <laughs> so we don't know where we're getting our influences all the time. And sometimes sure. it's hard to know what, so let me ask you this, when you're designing, you're sitting down at your computer designing, uh, or, or sketching something out, are you censorious of yourself? Are you stopping yourself? Go, oh, this looks too much like a Warren cliff that I think I've seen. Let me, or is it the sort of thing where you just kind of just go off and then, and then look at it later and do editing? Um, probably more the latter. I think when you're kind of in the, in the zone, you know, you're, you're just sort of trying your hardest to make something that looks good and, and works, you know, and that's sort of like, it's a puzzle, you know, cause, um, you know, I, I do most of my designing and kind of exploration in um, Adobe uh, Illustrator. So it's like kind of 2D vector stuff, but it's like, um, you know, you can pivot the blade, open it, close it. And, you know, oftentimes you're like, well, um, this looks really great open. But when you close it, like the, you know, tip hits the backspace or whatever. You know, there's all these like... Um, things that you're constantly correcting and sort of tweaking and and you just get in this sort of zone of like correcting and tweaking and opening and closing and um it's hard to kind of step out of that in that moment and be like oh this ended up looking like something you know and we've we had that happen a little bit with um one of the prototypes we had a blade show um the mash and we got a lot of comments that that looked like the um, Richard Rogers uh, slim utility, and yeah, we see it. You know, it's like, and we and we did see that before. Um, uh, you know, before we sort of went forward with the prototype, but in no way is it like, oh, we let's get as close as we can to this one knife. It's like. You know, we tweak and we massage it and we finesse it. And we do all the stuff to it. And, you know, there's tons of, I mean, I, I wish I could show you my, like, Illustrator artboard with, like, th not thousands, hundreds of variations of it. And then, um, you know, you land on something and you're happy with it. And, um, of course, at the end of the day, you're like, Shh, it looks like this, you know. And Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's a funny thing about the... Well, the knives looking like other knives. And you mentioned the Richard Rogers slim utility. And and I'm remembering, I think I'm remembering the mash. I think I know the knife you're talking about. Um, and that that wouldn't be a direct comparison I would make. But um, what I find interesting is that, for instance, um, here I have this just to illustrate. Uh, when I first saw the Evo, when it first came out, I was like, oh, that looks just like a Strider. That's a Strider ripoff. Yeah. You know, I didn't say that to anyone, but that's what I was thinking in my mind. Yeah. Um, and then, which is where I think everything, by the way. Uh, and then, and then I um, actually looked at them side by side pictures, and I'm like, no, okay, they're both folders. They both have a, a you know, large jimping and a lozenge shaped opening hole. Yeah. And and a ta and a handle that widens towards the pole. Right. That's about it. Right. But to me, in 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 my experience with the way my visual brain works, that's, those are the two things I aligned. And sure. I guess people were doing that with the, with the slim, uh, with the slim utility, but it doesn't, I don't, that didn't occur to me. Well, that's good to know that I'm glad it, it didn't, you know, that didn't ring true to you. And it's like, I guess, you know, it's just going to happen. Um, there's so many knives out there and so many designs that, you know, it is a 
I mean, it's a great time to be a, a knife enthusiast in that like so many people are cranking knives out right now. And these, these manufacturers and these companies are just running on all cylinders and cranking stuff out. And, I, and you know, like back, I think I'm sure there was a time that, you know, there was, you know, a handful of companies that were like putting out their things. They all had their sort of styles and, and there wasn't a whole lot of crossover there, but now that over the past probably 10 years, you know, there's just been this flood of, of knives and I'm grateful for, for that. I love that that's the case. Um, but you're bound to run into something that feels familiar. Yeah. Along the way. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, we've only been making knives for, you know, 10,000 years, I think, or something like that. Um, probably more, uh, probably vastly more. I don't know. Uh, but what makes me worry, you say it's a great time, and I agree with you. It's the best time so far that I've experienced, and I've been I've been collecting my knives the whole, my whole life, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm half a hundred. So, you know, there, I've seen it. And, and, and right now I'm like, um, I get, I get worried. It's kind of like, I, you know, I'm also a father and sometimes I have irrational bouts of worry thinking about every horrible thing under the sea. I mean, under the sky that could happen, you know, as, as a father, sure knife bubble. That's what I'm thinking. Like, are we in the middle of a bubble? Is it going to burst? And like the whole, cause how much more, you know, um, uh, and I, it's, you know, it's an I hope for much more. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question and a interesting thought. I've never, it's never really occurred to me. But like, I guess what we hope for is that the the people that are manufacturing these knives. I mean, there's no shortage of people that are designing knives. Let's be honest. Like any anyone can send a sketch to somebody, and they'll be like, "Yeah, um, we'll make it." You know, pay us however much money, and and that's that. Uh, if you have the money, you can make a knife or have a, have a knife made. It's, I think the worry that I have had before is that like the um, quality of these manufacturers, you know, we don't want to bog them down with stuff there. You know, some of these manufacturers that um, we lean on to make our knives, um, you know, there's a limited amount of people there and a limited amount of, you know, resources to do it. And and what they do is amazing. I mean, you know, I think we can all agree that like, you know, it's what they, what they've done is, is great. And what we don't want is for them to be like overwhelmed with, with people saying, knocking on their door saying, Hey, I have a new design. And then, I mean, I am admittedly part of that problem probably because I'm now knocking on lots of doors with lots it's not of a doors. problem. It's not a problem. <laughs> Take it from me. Uh, you know, what, what does concern me though, what if these companies, um, and this is all just, uh, you know, hypothetical, but what if the demand is so extreme that it becomes like, okay, all they really want is to fidget with these things. Don't worry about the heat treat so much, a little bit mm -hmm. here, a little bit there, or, or, or some of the other things suffer because it's just yeah. like, I mean, it's in my name, knife junkie, you know, like I, I do, I understand. I have an irrational, um, uh, sort of, uh, pull towards the things and, yeah. uh, you know, we'll spend my money on them and yeah. they're counting on that. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, one thing that I think is, is among the many wonderful things about the knife community is that, you know, they will, if, if something like the heat treat or the steel composition or whatever starts to get like a little weird, um, people will know people will find out really quickly <laughs> as we've seen yeah. like and i think that's great you know you need we need i'm not going to be the one that's like rockwell testing stuff in my yeah. garage you know i yeah. i'm trusting that this stuff is heat treated the way it's supposed to be heat treated and you know honestly i'm not like you know i have lots of knives and i'm not probably pushing any of them to the point where i'm I can tell if it's not treated to 60 or 61 or whatever, but there, there are people that are and, um, and they'll let you know if you're, if you're slacking on the heat treat or if yeah. you're slacking on this, if you're lying about the steel composition or something like that. So there's always going to be a level of like accountability. And I think, yeah. I think companies know that and, um, and us like, you know, myself and Kevin as, as people we as a company you know we 
try really hard to communicate that we um, we push for a certain Rockwell on a on a on a steel, even if it's a little bit beyond the manufacturer's recommendations, because that has sort of been what that's what is like the norm now, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, and, and there's pushback on that. So that's a battle that we, that I think companies have to fight with manufacturers that it's okay. If, uh, if it's, if you think it's just slightly more brittle, we will accept that for a longer, for a better edge retention or whatever. So anyways, it's, it's an interesting sort of um, conversation to be had and, and, and people will be, will be held accountable and and called out if it's not handled correctly, I think. Yeah. I mean, we also saw that with, um, you know, like Jake Hoback and getting, you know, people called him out for the origin of his knives, you know, Um, that's, I think because people really take this and we'll call it right now a hobby for you, it's an occupation, but people take knives seriously and get passionate about it. Like most people get passionate about whatever their hobbies or enthusiasms are. And, uh, and there's a certain, you know, self-righteousness. I'm not calling people self-righteous. It's not what I mean, but there's a certain feeling that you're doing good for your fellow knife lovers. And, and, you know, that that's your, you know, your brother in, in, in knives Yeah. and, uh, you're doing them a good solid by calling this kind of stuff out. And, and I agree, you know, it's self-policing. Yep. And, and the, uh, the knife community has been like really good at self-policing and, you know, if, if something goes awry, people are aware, and um, and I'm grateful for that. And and um, you you said it beautifully. Like I think we all want. I mean, we're all knife enthusiasts. No one's like trying to make a quick buck necessarily. You know, like um, you know, Kevin and I are just trying to make really good knives, and we're not. You know, the making money is not the is not the object right now. It's it's let's get the best thing we can into people's hands and um you know build a trustworthy kind of brand and uh but yeah i mean i think we're all we're all knife guys you know we're all <laughs> I'm, yeah. a, I'm a fan of of um lots of knife people that um are doing the same i assume yeah yeah i, I mean i think in your position it's uh people know that you're going to reputable uh, oems so right. it's a matter of do they like your designs and do they like who you're choosing for OEMs, but do they like your designs? And uh, that's a that's a great position to be in, I feel, because if it's a company that's making the work, then they're they're designing and making it. And they in other words, if you were starting your own knife company and you and Kev were making these knives, you would not only be making them, you would be designing them and those two things have to match up. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that you know that the OEMs that you're sending these knives to and, and or that you're sending your designs to are going to produce them well. And it's really hinging on your designs, not on your skill with a grinder. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we put a lot of trust in the manufacturing of these companies. Like QSP did a great job, we feel, with the with the stout. And yeah, um, Spielden has done a great job with this knife. You know, like there is a certain handoff of like, look, we have the design we feel like works well. We're trusting you guys to, to do a good job in executing it. And that's admittedly the hard part, you know, they're doing the hard part. We sort of have the easy job of making it look cool. And um, I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's easy to design a knife, you know, it's a, it's a labor of love, but like there's a lot of sort of engineering things that they have to, figure out on their own to to make it work and they've you know we trust them and they do a good job yeah an interesting thing about say the shield and that i uh shield and prototype that i'm holding right here or the um or the stout prototype from um oh not kubi it just escaped me um QSP. who made the stout qsp those two uh those two knives were more luxurious than any other QSP. And this mm. is feels feels like way more high quality. I shouldn't put it that way because all Shieldens that I've had, and we've had a bunch here, are really high quality. But this feels yep. luxurious. It feels different. Mm. And and it's it's interesting to me because I guess they pull out different stops for the OEM work. They're like, oh, we're, well, we're going to do this in right. 
the materials they're asking for and and it's like they put a special polish on it or something because uh, this is really feels nicer than any shielding well thank you that's good to hear and uh, we appreciate it and and you know truthfully i don't we don't know like what um i've heard that you know they actually sort of rush um the prototypes and the prototypes can oftentimes fall subpar of what the production would be because you have to like set up all the tooling and everything and you're mm -hmm. you know wasting not wasting but you're like spending time doing this for six knives or whatever that you could be like cranking out knives yeah. that are, yeah. are actually making you money and um so when we get prototypes i mean prototypes are really telling for us as a as a company you know if we have six prototypes that are really consistent and feel really good um that gives us a lot of confidence that the production you know they'll they'll get that really dialed in and um and shielding and qsp both have have done that with the prototypes and we've yet to see the the actual production run obviously but like we're confident that they're going to be really good so moving forward into the future uh, about you as a designer um are, are you maintaining parallel uh, design efforts with uh with your own personal label for um for licensing designs and stuff like that as well as devo are you kind of doing them uh simultaneously um i have yet to do anything under cm um since devo has has formed i mean devo has kept me really busy and you know we have you know four or five designs that are sort of in some stage of prototyping slash um you know production um so i haven't had time to really focus on cm designs um and truthfully you know it just feels like you know i'll probably focus on devo and mm -hmm. you know i mean it doesn't make a whole unless kevin and i just don't see eye to eye at all on on a design that i really love you know right. and um, in that case i might try to get it made somewhere else but um you know we have a very similar taste and and um i don't really see that being a problem so i i think there may be less cm designs out there and and more devo hope that's my hope um but we'll see there might hey. be a there might be a, a cm you know slipping through here and there i do have some still in in the works actually so there will be a couple of others i think trickling down the line um that are done and with the manufacturer but well that could be uh like your release valve like there's something that <laughs> there's a knife i just want to have made it's not right for the devo lineup it's not a devo knife that's true you know it's a colin knife yeah it's a uh it's a it's a recurved double triple edge tanto <laughs> <Yeah>. and I, <laughs> exactly but it's really small and it's a frame lock and <laughs> <laughs> i do so like small knives and and no kevin, i know <laughs> yeah. i guess kevin likes small knives i like smaller knives than kevin does so yeah so the the stout was three and a half this is three and a half right this is yeah that's about three um, and a half. three point six three inches. And a quarter or something like that three yeah. three point three i think the stout's three point three ish too three yeah you're right yeah right you're right <laughs> yeah i only designed the thing bob yeah i know how long the blade is you <laughs> dumbass all right um so what about devo knives then where do you see the company how do you see it evolving to its um you know what's what are you chasing there as a company I, mean, I think we would both say that we're just going to kind of keep going and you know we have you know i mean we we have seen some excitement around the stout and and around the growler and um that to us is really encouraging and and you know there's no specific goal we're trying to reach i think we're just going to keep cranking stuff out and um seeing seeing where it goes i mean we both we're both still employed um you know with full-time jobs elsewhere so this is for, for both of us still like a, a part-time gig and um you know th there's no like immediate i have no plan to like quit my job to do this full-time right uh, it's a it you know we, it, it's gonna take a while but um 
yeah, I think we're just going to go. And, and I mean, we're, we're, we both love it and there's no reason to stop and we're just going to keep going. I mean, to me, that's really exciting and that's kind of the goal. And that's, that's why I started this show. It's like, how can I spend, how can I spend uh, my hobby time basically yeah. <laughs> doing exactly. more knife stuff without, without boring all the people around me who yeah. don't care, <laughs> you know, like, uh, um, yeah. But but it it seems like uh, just like you can have CM designs as your as your release valve. It seems like uh, Devo knives can can release can do things in the pre sale way or or the yeah the the pre sale way for more expensive projects. You can mm -hmm. you can go so you it seems like you're pre preparing yourselves or are already making yourselves a versatile company. This is going to be just north of a hundred bucks. You said probably. Um, and then the stout, I don't know, that was probably a $300 knife. I'm not sure what, what you were, what it was going for, but it was uh, 285 ish on pre-order. It'll probably 290 something on it. You know, we'll have some extras that are, but yeah, just so, south of 300. Yeah. So it makes sense for you guys, right. To, yep. to do that kind of thing on a pre, so you know that you're going to get your money for that. Yeah. And, you know, it, we just couldn't afford to do it otherwise. You know, we had oh, to, right, right. we had to that. raise the money to do a, to pay the manufacturer to, to make them. Um, and I'm sure there'll still be more pre-orders coming for, for nicer knives. It's just, you know, this, the shield and knife we were able to afford ourselves. So I think there'll be a balance of sort of premium expensive pre-order type of knives and you know stuff that we can just release and you know go for a 14c micarta or probably not g10 he, uh, he hates g10 but like yeah. micarta and um, you know a, an affordable good steel um you'll you'll see more of that i'm sure that's what people want they want range spider co gives you range yeah, cold exactly. steel gives you range and right. now they all you know not they all, but some some of the big ones, and and those are the popular ones, the ones that yeah. give you a lot of options. So I, I, that seems like a good plan. So how can people catch up with you or or find out about Devo knives and uh, and get on a pre order or or find out when pre orders are coming up and that kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, um, best thing is to go to devoknives.com and scroll down to the bottom and sign up for our newsletter, and you'll get blasted with emails every once in a while when there's a, a new release coming. Um, Follow myself and, and Kevin on Instagram. I'm CM underscore knife designs, I believe. Um, and, you know, Kevin's obviously left the EDC. Like we're both, we're both posting a lot about, um, about our upcoming Devo stuff and, and follow Devo knives on Instagram as well. Yeah. It's a great feed and, and, well, it's eye candy. What can I say? Yeah, I love that guy. So, Colin, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. It was a pleasure to meet you and to and to get your side of the story of Devo Knives yeah. as well. <laughs> well, thanks so much for having me on. It was a it was an honor, and I'm a big fan. So this was um, um, this was good to be on here. Great awesome, talk. and and this was my honor. Thanks for entrusting oh. me with oh. this. <laughs> Our pleasure, man. All right, take care. Yeah, you too. Do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. There goes Colin. Keep your eyes peeled for the upcoming release uh, OEM'd by Shielden, uh, the Growler. Uh, I'll, I'll show you one more time. This thing is so cool and a great, great cutter. Uh, join us next week for another great uh, conversation with a knife maker or a knife luminary type. And also join us on Wednesday for the midweek supplemental. Don't forget Thursday night knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch, whatever that is. And if you need the uh, podcast downloaded so that you can listen when you're on the go, uh, we're on all the podcast apps. So check us out there. All right, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, 
comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. 